today on Personal Injury Court. Their pig nearly bit your thumb off. I petted her with my left hand and I looked away for two seconds and then all of a sudden there's just blood everywhere and half of my fingers oh. gone. It's her fault. Where do you pet pigs? <laughs> Not in their mouth. You are suing the Browns for a total of $50,000, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. It's my understanding that Penelope is here. <laughs> Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Moore versus Brown. Mrs. Moore, it's my understanding from the documents that you submitted to this court that you are suing the Browns for a severe thumb injury when their pig nearly bit your thumb off. You're asking this court to award you $30,000 for past medical bills, $10,000 for future medical bills, and $10,000 for future pain and suffering for a total of $50,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. and Mrs. Brown, you all believe this was her fault. She went places she shouldn't go. Yes, yes Your Honor. You're not responsible. Yes, Your Honor. Now let's get into the legal sauce. Now, Miss Moore, how did you and Miss Brown meet? Me and Miss Brown met at a bookstore, and I was in the mystery section reading over some books, and she approached me. And this is the first person that I had met since I moved to this state, so I was kind of excited to, you know, get yes, out and meet somebody. You all hit it off right away. And we just hit it off. And is that when she told you about the pig? Correct, Your Honor. And did she tell you that the pig's name was Penelope? She did tell me that the pig's name was Penelope. She also told me that the pig was very sociable and it liked to be around people. Now, before this, other than a bacon and eggs breakfast, had you ever had any contact with pigs? <laughs> no, Your Honor. So, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, you all raised Penelope, right? That's correct, Talk, Your tell Honor. Tell me about Your Penelope. Honor. She's the sweetest little pig. Like, she's the best pet I've ever had. Like, honestly, like, she... It's almost like a dog, you know? You can potty train her. Then she will come, she responds to her name. Um, she actually rolls over. Now, did you all have her from her time as a baby? Yes. We got her when she was about, like, six weeks old. And now she's a year already, right? Yeah, about, about a year old. She's yeah. a cuddler. So yeah. it, it sounds like a dog, right? She's, she's super sweet. She's and super now, is she well-behaved? Oh, yes. We, no. actually have, we actually have a trainer specifically for her. So, Ms. Moore, they're describing a, a pig with wings. I mean, an angel <laughs> pig. You tell me who you met, and how did this happen? Your Honor, I met a monster. That's what happened. She told That's me... That's ridiculous. She no. told me that the pig got along with strangers and that the pig loved to be fed by anybody who approached That's not her. True, Your Honor. Okay. So I took it upon myself. So you're going to the house, you're, you're expecting to feed Penelope. What happens? We were gonna have a brunch and, you know, I got there, she shows me pictures, professional pictures of her and her pig. So I'm like, that's really cute. You know, that's, it's like her kid, you know, because I have a kid. So we me bought- Me too, I got three of them. Yeah. Not, so we... not three pigs, I have three sons. <laughs> So, you know, we got there, everyone was, you know, socializing and having a good time. And later on in the afternoon, I decided I wanted to go meet Penelope. Are you by yourself? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, is Penelope in the house? Is she out on the front porch? Penelope Where is she? Penelope was in the backyard in her little barn area okay. that she sits in. Then what happens? So I approached her. She, she seen me coming for her, so she kind of like walked up to where the door was. And she's cute, right? Yes, as, as she's cute. Cute she as pigs look, can be. If she looked aggressive, obviously, I wouldn't approach her. But you didn't think she was going to be aggressive. Exactly. So then what did you do? So when I approached her, I had food like celery, and I petted her with my left hand, and I looked away for two seconds because I thought I heard somebody come outside. And then I look back, and then all of a sudden, there's just blood everywhere, and half of my finger's gone, and I can't... I couldn't even grasp what was no. going on. No. That's okay. But and, she says... And this is a shot of your angel. hand? Yes, Your Honor. Look okay, at that. Okay, you've submitted this to the court. Uh, this is what it looked like after you got it out of yes, Penelope's mouth? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me that doesn't look like a nice pig. Why Mr. would you have a monster Mr. like that Mrs. in your Brown, house? You see this. How did you all know that something bad had happened? 
Well, we didn't even know what had happened at first, you know, because we were with our guests and then suddenly we hear screaming and then she runs in bleeding. Yeah, I had no idea what had happened. We're like, Did this shock y'all that Penelope nearly bit somebody's thumb of off? Of course. Yes, we cannot believe yes. it, honestly, because she's... She had never done anything like no, this before. Never. She's the sweetest. Tell, tell me this. Miss Moore comes over. She's expecting to have a great day, get to know her new friend, and you all get closer, and she leaves with a mangled hand from your property. Why isn't this your fault? Because she disobeyed our clear you instructions. You should have signs up that say, beware when, of a pig. When we, what when, were your when we received our guest, we told them whoever wanted to meet the pig, they had to wait, that later on we would go and we would introduce them because the, the pig doesn't know them. So the pig You're is like any other well, Were you worried about Penelope being surprised and biting the hell out of somebody? No, I'm biting, no. but surprised, of course, because if there's a lot of people she doesn't know, like like even a dog or a cat, you know, they'll get anxious, you know, a little bit nervous. Sure. So we wanted to avoid that. You were trying to make sure Penelope was comfortable, too. Of course, of course, yes, everybody. We're trying to cater to everybody, so that's why we were very clear. Well, Mr. Brown, where were you at the time that this screaming comes? So we were with the guests, and um, I, I hear somebody that's hysterical, hysterical screaming, so... Yeah, you would be, too, if you got bit by a pig. So, direct your comments to me. I know this is important, really. I'm just trying to get to the truth, okay? Yeah, so we were with the guests. Um, I heard screaming. Um, I immediately uh, went to go check it out, and I saw uh, Miss Moore, and she had covered and, in blood. And did her hand look like that when you got there? Yes, Your Honor. Coming up. I honestly was in shock. I didn't know what to think. They didn't really react when I came in and told them what happened. So what we were going to do is, after we finished the brunch, we would take them in pairs, and we would go introduce them. Hot bellies, especially at her age, they're just like puppies, very curious animals, very energetic animals. If someone had food and they didn't feed her properly, that would be an issue. They shouldn't have fed her. She told me that the pig got along with strangers. So when I approached her, I had food like celery, and I petted her with my left hand, and I looked away for two seconds, and then all of a sudden, there's just blood everywhere, and half of my fingers gone. Did her hand look like that when you got there? Yes, Your Honor. OK, so what did you do? I immediately started trying to assess what the wound was. Um, I brought her into the kitchen. Um, I uh, ran her hand under some cold water to see how bad the actual injury was. And Miss Moore, do you remember Mr. Brown trying to give you aid and take care of your thumb? Vaguely, I do remember them yelling. I know you must have been freaking out with I... your hand looking like that. Yes. But you Honor. do remember him trying to take care of you. I do, after they yelled at me for being in the backyard with Penelope. So, Mr. Brown, what did you do next? So, I went to uh, my medic bag. Um, I grabbed some gauze. You said medic bag. Yes. How, would, how would you have a medic bag? Uh, well, Your Honor, I was uh, in the United States Navy for six years. And, and thank you for your department. service, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and um, I was stationed with 2nd Battalion, 3rd Marines. This is that uh, chiseled man in that picture is you? <laughs> Yes, and um, what I mainly did was combat medicine and also dealing with trauma. So you've seen the worst of the worst? Yes, Your Honor. So did this freak you out a little bit when you saw Miss Moore's thumb nearly chewed off? No, Your Honor. Okay. So Miss Moore, he's, he's rendering aid to your hand. What's going through your head at this time? I honestly was in shock. I didn't know what to think. They didn't really react when I came in and told them what happened. I mean, obviously, I was crying and screaming. He you would think they'd be more sympathetic, aid. but they yeah. were not. So you're giving aid. Where are you, Miss Brown, when your husband's giving aid to Miss Moore? So I went to, to clear the guests and tell them that everything was being taken care of. I was, you know, reassuring them that everything was going to be okay. Because they must you know, have been freaking out a little bit, too. Everybody was freaking out, of course. In terms of the guests meeting Penelope, how would it have worked out? Okay, so the reason we put the pig, right, we put Penelope at the, at the far barn that's um, at the end of our property. So what we were going to do is after we finished the brunch, we would take them in pairs and we would go introduce them. And if they wanted to feed them, we would show them how to feed them because there's a specific way. How do you feed a pig? <laughs> What's a special way to feed a pig? It's, a... it's, it's like similar how, uh, like, feeding a horse. You want to you wanna keep your hand flat and straight. Okay. You don't, you don't want to leave anything hanging out. You especially don't want to be reaching towards the, the animal's mouth. Okay. And now, when you went to feed Penelope, 
Show me how you did it, but do it with your left hand, because I know your thumb, yeah, I can't. it looks like I could blow on it and make it hurt. Next. Half of my thumb is gone, and my ligaments and all my muscles are torn off, as you guys seen in the picture. It's her fault. I think it's time that you start acting like the grown woman you are, and you take responsibility for your actions. And I would imagine that uh, pigs have pretty strong jaws, right? Not too strong. Apparently strong enough to tear off somebody's thumb, right? Yeah, but she thought it was food. Folks, I think I've heard everything that I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. Their pig nearly bit your thumb off. And I looked away for two seconds, and then all of a sudden, there's just blood everywhere, and half of my finger's gone. We were very clear. If they wanted to feed them, we would show them how to feed them, because there's a specific way. I did some research before I came to her house, because I'm not going to just approach a random stranger. I have common sense. Oh, and common you guys should have a beware sense. of a pig Enough to pet out a stranger's animal, try yeah. to feed it. You did a little research. I guess feeding Penelope was pretty important to you for you to do a little research. Yeah. I fed her the way that, you know, I had done research on it. Then what happens? I had started petting her after she, because she came up to me and she was eating out of my hand. So, so are you petting her with the other hand? Yes. Okay. So you've got one hand on her back. Correct. Is it her back or, where do you pet pigs? I mean, We're, not in their mouth. Here. Not okay. In their, yeah. <laughs> okay. And they like to be scratched, it, you, like here behind the ear. Okay. Well, Ms. Moore, you've put in the uh, court documents that you submitted that uh, you have $30,000 in past medical bills, wow. and then you anticipate another ten in repair of that thumb, and then you're asking this court to award you $10,000 for pain and suffering. <laughs> what, what kind of pain and suffering uh, has this thumb put on you? Well, for starters, half of my thumb is gone. And my ligaments and all my muscles are torn off, as you guys seen in the picture. And there was just blood everywhere. I used to drive in a stick shift. I can't drive my car anymore. I had to sell my car. Are you right-handed? Um, well, when you drive a stick shift, you drive with the right hand. So yes, ma'am. I've driven a few. Okay. So I, I can't drive my car, so I had to sell my car. I have a son that plays basketball. How I old is your son? He's six. Okay, that, those are great ages. Yes. Great ages. I Makes can't, me reminisce. I can't hold him with this because this is the, the arm that I usually hold him with. I can't play basketball with him, so this is... Does he know that mommy's different? Yes, he does, Your Honor. Y'all see that this, this is a big deal. It's not only affected it, her, it's affected it's her, her son. It's her fault. Do, do y'all have children? No, so, Your Honor. Exactly. But, but, you, but you have nieces yourself. and nephews, like though, right? And we have nephews, yes. yes. So you understand how a mommy would be affected absolutely, by this. Absolutely, absolutely. So, folks, we've been talking about Penelope. It's my understanding that Penelope is here. Yeah. We have her with her trainer. Sheriff Matt, would you uh, go and get Penelope and her trainer? Yes, Your Honor. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, Penelope. Good girl. Baby. Good girl. So, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, this yes. is Penelope. That's Penelope. Isn't yeah. she the sweetest? Look at her. Come on, honey. Mm. Almost <laughs> makes me want a pig. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, ma'am, tell me your name. Natalia. Tell us about Penelope. Well, Penelope is a year old, and she is 60 pounds. She's a pot belly pig, so she's going to be minimum 150 pounds. And uh, what about a uh, pig's demeanor, that is, domestic pigs like this? Tell me what their, their personalities are like. Well, pot bellies, especially at her age, they're just like puppies, very curious animals, very energetic animals, but also love to take long naps. What makes them bite? They, you know, nothing necessarily makes them bite. If, if someone had food and they didn't feed her properly, that would be an issue. Is, is that usually how these injuries happen, that, that people don't have the food right in their hand or something? Yeah, you know, just like you're feeding a horse, you know, you put your hand flat and you offer it. But you shouldn't offer an animal food if the owner has not given you permission to do so. And I would imagine that uh, pigs have pretty strong jaws, right? Not too strong. I mean, she... Well, know, apparently strong enough to tear off somebody's thumb, right? Yeah, indeed. But if she knew it was a human hand, she would not have bitten down like that. What's the proper way to feed a pig? Just like feeding a horse, you have to bend down. I can demonstrate All for right, you. All right, please, show me how you do that. This is a normal dog treat. So you bend down slowly. Look. See how gentle she's doing that? Okay. Very slow. You crouch down to their level so they're not afraid. You show them the treat. Ms. Moore, is that how you did it? 
You yes, did it Your gently. Honor. You went down to her level. Yes, Your Honor. You put and your I... hand out flat. Yes, Your Honor. And I waited for her to approach me. So, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, she, no. it sounds, at least from her perspective, that she did everything right and ends up with honestly, part of her thumb torn honestly, off. Honestly, I can't trust her word because we told her not to go and she did well, it. Well, I so can't trust you because you told me the pig was we nice. We can't trust. So, if she had followed your instruction, this would have never happened. Absolutely. That's, that's where y'all stand. Yes. They did not give me any instructions. Yes, we did. On that. No, yes, you did we not. Did. So, Miss Natalia, no thank you. And uh, Miss Penelope, thank you too. <laughs> Thank you, may, you very you much. You may be released. Here. Come on, baby. Say bye. Come on. Home. So, Miss Moore, tell me this. Your son is affected by this. You've been affected by this. I imagine that there's some things you want to say to the Browns in a respectful way, but something you want them to hear. I honestly think that you guys need to stop having socializing events at your home when you have a monster living in there or keep the pig on a different property. That's all I gotta say. I think it's time that you start acting like the grown woman you are and you take responsibility for your actions. The verdict is in. This is more. In this case, you believe that the defendant should have told you that Penelope had the capacity to bite. You all, on the other hand, never knew that Penelope could bite someone. You raised her as a baby. You were going to let everyone meet her, but there is a way to do it. So, folks, I think I've heard everything that I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. So I approached her. She she's seen me coming for her. She's cute, right? Yes, as, as and she's cute. Cute as pigs can be. And I looked away for two seconds, and then all of a sudden, there's just blood everywhere, and half of my finger's gone. She disobeyed our clear you should instructions. You have signs up that say, beware of a pig. You know, folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff, that is you, Miss Moore, who's suing the Browns, you must prove, in order to be successful, that the Browns were wrong, and that their wrong caused your very, very severe injuries. It is no secret that you have suffered terrible life-altering injuries. This has affected you as a mom, it's affected you as a woman, it's affected you as a person, and that is not lost on this court, believe me. And Ms. Moore, in this case, you have sued the Browns for $30,000 in past medical bills, $10,000 for future medical expenses, and you want this court to award you $10,000 for your pain and suffering, which has been demonstrated. A $50,000 award against the Browns is what you see. Now, you, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, you all feel terrible about her injury. This was the beginning of a good friendship. It should have been a day for a wonderful brunch and where your guests got to meet Penelope. You gave strict instructions that folks should go when you say they should go. Yes, you're Here, you all believe this is not your fault. If she had followed the directions, fed Penelope correctly, frankly, waited until it was time, then this never would have happened. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Moore, you've proven that there is a wrong. You've proven that the wrong caused your terrible injuries. However, here, the wrong was yours. You should not have gone out without the Browns. You should not have gone and fed Penelope in the way that you did. And unfortunately, the law holds you accountable for your injuries. So I must, as much as it pains me in light of this injury, I must find against you and in favor of the Browns. And that is my final verdict. This matter is adjourned. Thank you.